Hallelujah. Let's give God praise. Amen. Give God praise. Hallelujah. He is for you. Amen. He is for you. Hallelujah. Say with me, my God is for me. Hallelujah. My God is for me. Amen. What's up, Brother Christian? Praise God. Anybody celebrating a birthday? Maybe a maybe tomorrow? Is anyone celebrating a birthday? Maybe tomorrow? Caitlin? Caitlin? T? Don't get crunchy about it, sis. I can't hear. Tay Taylin? Taylin, come on, Taylin. Tay Tay, come on, Tay. Come on, Tay Tay. Yay, we're going to sing you a happy birthday. Let's give God praise for this little one, amen. Yay. Are you, are, you really, are you really shy? You're not that shy, are you? Come on up. Where's the, where, where's the sombrero at? No, there, there, there ain't no such thing. Hey, that's love right there, huh? Praise God. Get up here. Get up here. Hey, Taylor, how, how old are you? Ten. Huh? Ten. Ten? She's ten years old. Let's give God praise. Amen. God's angel. You are so beautiful. So beautiful. Praise God. And you're here for support? Come up here. Come up here. Praise God. We're going to start something new. You're here for support. Oh, look. Woo, that's a perfect fit. Woo, that's a perfect fit right there. Amen. Y'all, let, let's, let's sing to God's beloved daughter and wish her happy birthday. Amen. Happy birthday. I'd like to say thank you to, uh, to my beloved wife for her support. Um, Holy Spirit asked me to do something a couple weeks ago, and I've been disobedient, Pastor, and uh, I've been struggling with it. And I've struggled with it for the past couple weeks because for six years, God exposed that it became part of my identity. And Father doesn't want anything to be part of your identity except for who? Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. So uh, say it with me, it's a new season. It's a new season. Say it with me, it's a new blessing. It's a new blessing. Say it with me, it's a fresh anointing. It's a fresh anointing. So I just want to say. Mom Deb said, did she have to dope you up to, to do this? I love you, man. Yeah, Brother Ryan said, no, you ain't going to do that. <laughs> Wait, we don't touch the beard, right, Brother Ryan? Man, I missed you, man. Amen. Give God praise, Brother Ryan's here. Hallelujah. We missed you. We missed you, man. Praise God. Hallelujah. So, yes, um, it's been, I receive it, sis. Thank you. It's, it's been, and I, I confess to you, it's been, it's been hard. It's, it's been, um, 
you know, it's amazing because we can stand up here and we know it's all Holy Spirit flowing. But uh, I didn't want to do it. And even as I stand here, I thank you guys for all the love and support. But, you know, it's, isn't that amazing that something like that, a bun, and, and Father asked me two weeks ago, and I thank God that he gave me mercy and grace that I'm still standing here because we're not promised tomorrow, right? And I knew I was being disobedient, but I told Trish two weeks ago, and she said, you have to listen to God. If he said get, it, get rid of it, you got to get rid of it. And um, kept on struggling with it. I'm so thankful, man. It's, it's hard. Amen. Uh, glory to God. So um, our worship service this evening is titled, What Are You Looking At? Don't be looking for the bun, I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> I can't make that stuff up, right? <laughs> what are you looking at? And we're going to be in Matthew 6, verse 22 to 34. I want to say uh, thank you with all my heart and how you bless God Almighty. Look what God is doing in our church family, in our community. You know, I love so much is that, you know, we're just about our business. The furthest we've ever been away is in Bardstown, and somebody came up and goes, we see all the things Open Arms Community Church is doing in the community. And I have no idea who they are, right? And I'm like, praise God, and we just love and hug each other, and we're just so grateful, you know. And um, this, is, this is a new season, and we're just really excited. Before we start, I'm going to ask Elder Lance to open us up in prayer. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. So when we talk about uh, the eye, it's one of the things that early, early in my walk with the Lord, Father ministered uh, in depth, Brother William, about the eyeball. And when I say this is that Holy Spirit took me aside and intimately showed me as far as the power of the eye and how fast the eye moves a lot of people don't realize that the eyeball moves, hallelujah, brother Adam, sister Stacey, let's give God praise. We love you guys, hallelujah. We love you all. The eye, the eye moves in a fraction of a second. Calculated speed is one one hundredth of a second, which means you can't even... You, 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 you can't even, if, if I was to make a sound every one one hundredth of a second, it sounds like this. Uh, you can't, that's how fast your eyeball moves. Now why in the world would Father God want us this evening to worship in this title, what are you looking at? Well, because the eye, believe it or not, triggers dopamine. The eye can trigger lust. The eye can trigger judgment. And so it's very important in a beloved child of God that we know only through Christ how to control this eye. Or eyes, I should say. Right? It's not like that. Or two. Right? How many of you want to be able only through Christ, to control your eye. Amen? Same here. And I pray in Jesus' name. Remember, I'm just a mouthpiece. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit, his presence, will bless us with a fresh anointing and wisdom that when we leave here, that God Almighty has such a control over our eyes. You see, the beauty of this message is that Holy Spirit wants to show that if we can stay focused on God, his anointing will bless you with such power that the things in the past that used to take you down a road that you never were meant to go, guess what? God will expose it through your eye. Amen? Are you excited? Say amen. amen. Hallelujah. I'm excited. Amen. I'm excited. 
Hallelujah. I can't wait. Praise God. The eye is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are good, there's only one good now, right? Amen. Who's the only one good? Come on now. Praise God. Don't you love it when Lord Jesus Christ told the rich young ruler, why you call me good? See, right now, Holy Spirit is asking that of you. Why do you call God good? We say it every time we're together. God is good? All the time? And we know him to be good because he gave us Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. We know that he is good because Lord Jesus, he didn't judge us. He took it on the cross. And Lord Jesus Christ, he started the work when he yielded up his spirit. Mm. Can you imagine when we're raptured out of here, when that trumpet goes off and we're in glory of the Father. The written word of God says that we'll have the mind of Christ, meaning that we will know everything. And can you imagine that when we know everything in that moment of glory, we're going to know exactly what our Lord did for us when he yielded up his spirit and he laid the smack down in hell. Amen. Hallelujah. He layeth the smacketh down in hell. I'll tell you that right now, right? He laid the smack down. You, you ever get hit or you, you ever, I mean, let's just be real. You ever get hit so hard that change falls out of your pocket? Well, guess what? Satan got hit so hard, the keys fell out of his pocket. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus Christ holds the keys. Amen. It's his. Amen. So if your eyes are good, we like to say gooder and gooder, your whole body will be full of light. And this is what we have. Say it with me, that's me. That's Holy Spirit in you, praise God. And the reason why is because your focus is on him. Amen. So I'm going to ask you, when I ask this or when you see it pop up on the screen, what are you looking at? It helps me, we haven't done this in a while, for you to respond, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. What are you looking at? Lord Jesus Hallelujah. Listen, if we're going to do this, Sister Stacy, you didn't say nothing. I can't believe it. What are you looking at? Lord Jesus All right, praise God. Hallelujah. And this is fun. I know to some of you, you're like, ah, oh, I don't want to do it. But guess what? We're asking God to change our eyes. Amen. See, this, this gate right here can get us in a lot of trouble. It's done me. It's brought me down years. Years of bondage that I put on myself because of this. Right? Say it with me, no more. No more. Hallelujah. Matthew 6, 23 says this. If your eyes are bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light within you is darkness... How great is that darkness? Huh? How great is that darkness? I see this picture right here. And it shows a little bit of what the emphasis is on how great is that darkness inside of you. See, it goes way beyond what we can even communicate in our human language, what we know as English, or express how important it is for us not to judge, not to provoke, not to have a prideful spirit, right? Not to be so quick to blame and judge and harbor these kind. The reason why God is showing you right here. As a beloved child of God, you could be covered by the blood, blessed in all your ways. But God is a God that he will not push himself on you. He's a gentleman. Which means if you choose to have unforgiveness in your heart, or if you want to nitpick everybody, or if you want to be that person that just wants to be the judge, God's going to let you do it. But I warn you, beloved church family, that if you play that game with God, he will let you do what you want to do to the point where he'll have nothing to do with you. God will give you over to a reprobated mind. That's the Bible. Well, Pastor Joe, you're just trying to scare us. No, I love you. I never try to scare anybody. If the truth hurts and it scares you, praise God, fear him. Amen? But if what I'm saying to you just agitates you and you're like, well, you just don't know what that person did. 
Or you just don't know what I've gone through. You're right, I don't. But I know what he's gone through. And that's all that matters, hallelujah. That's all that matters. Now, if we're family, if we're brothers and sisters, praise God, we have this commonality. We have this that keeps us together. The blood of God. We have this where no matter what we do to offend each other, what we did wrong, whether it was intentional or unintentional, if you're truly a Christian and his blood covers you, then the fruit of your relationship with God is, I don't care what happened, I'll forgive you, let's move on in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Amen. What does that do, Brother Larry, when you have that heart of worship and you know that I can't judge nobody, I can't be mad at you, Jackie, because you didn't say hi to me the other day, right? I can't. But guess what? We're living in that kind of world right now. Just this week, oh, I saw you, you didn't say hi to me. Why didn't you say hi to me? And it's like, oh, right? And I'm like, and now you're going to be crunchy about that? It's a relationship, amen? It's a relationship. And God wants this relationship with you that when you mess up, to repent. When you mess up, enough with the excuses. Enough with the excuses. Here's a challenge to everybody. Will you be the first one to say sorry? Oh, my goodness. Huh? Or will you be that guy? Or that woman? Look, I just can't believe them. Look at that. Right? Look at what they did. What do you mean look at what they did? They know what they did. God knows what they did. Everybody knows what they did. You're not speaking any revelation. But if you could rebuke that darkness that's trying to come in you and say, Father, I'm so thankful that you blessed me, you forgave me, and that now because the forgiveness lives inside of me, I have the power to forgive anybody. I have the power to forgive any kind of thing that happened to me because I want to be free from it. Amen. I want to be free. Hallelujah. What's up, Brother Cody? Praise God. Hallelujah. What's up, sis? Walking fast ain't going to work. You just, you just chill. You just take, you just, just take your time. Just walk over there. <laughs> oh, so good to see you guys. Praise God. Hallelujah. How great is that darkness? What are you looking at? Hallelujah. So we put these two up here. That eye, the eye and then butt, the big red butt up there, if your eyes are bad. And then we're going to start in verse 24. Check this out. It says this. No one can serve two masters. Either he will hate the one and love the other. Or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Amen. Amen. Now hear my heart, family. Hear my heart. This word money can mean anything. Amen. Everything. Everything. It could mean everything. You cannot serve God and yourself. You cannot serve God and your wife. You cannot serve God and your, believe it or not, church. Woo, what in the world did that mean? Right? If you try to serve God and your church, guess what is going to happen? You're going to be frustrated, you're going to want to believe in, and you're going to hurt the church. But if you just serve God, and you worship God. And it's just about blessing God Almighty in your life. That whatever Holy Spirit lays on your heart, you're going to do what God says to do to serve the church. Get ready now because you're going to experience church the way it was meant to be in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. And that's one accord. Amen. One accord. One body. One spirit. Hallelujah. Agape. Overflowing. His peace. His power. His miracles. Amen. Why? Because we only serve you, God. We don't put nothing. I like to say Nathan. We put Nathan close to you. Nothing. Because it has to be just you. There's some of you right now, Holy Spirit just showed me that you struggle with that. Some wives are struggling with that right now. There's also some parents right now struggling because your kids are right there with God. Listen, family. What a lot of people don't know is when you play this game with God, and Father God says he has to be number one, if you are out of order with God, 
you actually hurt whoever you're trying to put at that same level with God. It's like me putting Trish up on the stage. If I try to treat Trish the same I do God, and my life is out of order, it's putting Trish on the stage and going, for all the world. And you know what Father God says, I want nothing to do with that because that's an idol in your life. Amen. Say it with me, no more. No. I don't want any idols, amen? amen? What are you looking at? No. Hallelujah. Therefore, Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you'll eat or drink, about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? What are you looking at? So you see the difference between having a light that is darkness and for God Almighty to say, how great is that darkness? Here's God telling us right now, Holy Spirit teaching us right now, you call on my name. I saved you, Sister Melissa. You're my beloved. I live in you. My light lives in you. But yet, because of your pride and disobedience, maybe it's religion. The bottom line is because you don't want a relationship with Holy Spirit, you're allowing this darkness to come into where only the holy of lights should exist. Say it with me, no more. I don't want nothing to do with it. And I confess, I went down that road for years. Prideful, religious. Right? Studied the Bible like I do college. Preach messages that were very deep, headstrong. Was Holy Spirit in it? Was the fruits of my life reflective of Holy Spirit? I'd yell and cuss my wife. I'd be quick to get angry. Right? Every time that I would talk about Jesus with somebody, all I wanted to find out was, how much do you know? Couldn't even have a conversation of praising our Lord. I would just have a conversation just to prove you wrong and you didn't know nothing. When the bottom line is, all you need to know is, Jesus Christ is Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? That's all there is to know. Amen. Just drop the mic. Hallelujah. And of course, we saw what happens when you are focused on God and you have this relationship with the Lord and you're so focused on his light that his presence within you will expose everything. You see, Holy Spirit just showed right now, just not only in this illustration, but we as humans, this is how we see outward, correct? Eyeball, I'm looking at you right now, right? But the way God sees through us is from within. And from within the Holy of Holies, in your heart, His light, as you look out, He will expose everything that's going on in your life. Amen? Which means if you're quick to judgment, if you're, if you're racist, right? If, if, if you're double-minded, double-tongued, meaning you lie all the time. Your eyes right now see it. You see this, and God is asking, I'm showing you through my anointing. Holy Spirit is exposing this foul thing that you need to get rid of. But what happens in pride? We have these things that we need to issue. We have to take that issue with God, right? Lay it down at the altar because God is showing us, exposing it, right? But what do we do in pride? We start judging other people for all their shortcomings. And we're so quick to call them out and to start gossiping about it. I am thankful in the name of Lord Jesus Christ as I stand here before you right now. I rebuke it and I don't do that. Actually, if you start doing it, I'll just... I've done it. I'll walk away. My God is too important than to sit there and listen to gossip or complaining or griping. And you know what? When I first got here four years ago, there were, there were people, darkness. I'm going to just call it the way it is, darkness. And there, there's these wolves would say, oh, my gosh, we're so happy you're here. 
But let me tell you, let me tell you about this person over here. Oh, we're so glad that you're here. We, we love you guys. Let me tell you about what leadership did wrong. And then I started preaching the messages. If you don't want to be here, go. Because this is Holy Spirit's church. Which means if you don't want to worship God, and if you don't want to just zip that up and repent, then this isn't where you want to be because we're not going to do that here. Amen? Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Hey, but guess what? I got in trouble. I got in trouble. Because you guys didn't know people running their mouth. And I couldn't say nothing at that time until here, four years later. It's a new season. And I had to tell them, Pastor, if this, doesn't, if this isn't your home, go. But we're going to worship God Almighty. And we're going to bless God. But no more of this backbiting, right? No more talking about, you talk about my elder, guess what? I'm going to say, bless my elder. Amen. Amen. Bless them. Pray for them. Don't you dare talk about them. Don't you dare talk about the leadership. Why would you do that to your life, to your family, to your children? Why would you talk about God's anointed and open that door? That spiritual door that you just, you're just basically saying, hey, devils, come on. There's some of you that actually do that right now. And God is saying, enough. You know who you are and you need to repent. I pray you stay here. I pray in Jesus' name that the harvest is so great. Listen, family, I pray that we have no chairs. I, I cannot wait for the day. What are we going to do? Right? Hallelujah. We're going we're to be the first church to tell people you got to bring your own chair. Amen. 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 Right, Brother Cody? Hey, listen. Listen, we worship God. We have a great time. But seriously, bring your own chair because there ain't no place to sit. <laughs> right? And I don't want anywhere. I don't want anyone to go. I don't want you to leave. But here in my heart, if your fruit shows that you are a pure, evil wolf, that all your heart is to do is to talk about people, to disrupt what God is doing in his holy church as a pastor, that I'm accountable to God Almighty, I will speak the truth. And guess what? If God says you can't say nothing but take it from the elders, I'm going to do it. And you know what? I'm going to be the first to say sorry. You know why? I want God to control these eyes. Amen. I want God to control my eyes. I want God to control my eyes so much. Mama, listen. That if by accident, how many of you know that you see some things at Walmart you ain't supposed to see? Some people look like they just roll out of bed and just went shopping. <laughs> if that's you, I pray for you. Right? Put some clothes on. Seriously, they roll out of bed and they're in aisle six. <laughs> Just, <laughs> right? And what I, where I'm getting at is that there's sometimes, sometimes, I'll see something that, oh. And the enemy, the enemy strategically plots for that moment, you know. Because that's what he does. He said, how many of you know that the devil has... Has the ministers of the darkness. If you don't have Jesus, I don't care how good that person is, they're a demon. Oh, you just don't know how good they are. No, nope. he's the only one good. Amen. Amen. <laughs> which, which means if the good one isn't living in you, you ain't no good. Amen. How are you going to call yourself good if the good? Mm. Let's move on. Praise God. What are you looking at? Look, <laughs> I love it when the Bible says this, because here's the Lord Jesus Christ ministering and teaching us through Holy Spirit the power of the eye. And you could just imagine in this story, what was his disciples looking at that caught their attention? Now, if you notice where we picked up, it starts talking about treasures. Don't store treasures here on earth, store treasures in heaven, right? Right? Can you imagine that his disciples, you know, they're just kicking it, walking, just walking along. And you could just imagine maybe Peter just, look at that truck. Man, that's a diesel truck. Blowing black smoke. Look at that, man, I wish I had them rims. He got spinners on them. <laughs> and the radio's not even turned up and I could hear it. Right? And then you hear Lord Jesus Christ put his hand, whoo. Put his hand on Peter and says, the eye. 
the eye. And I know I'm picking on Peter, but it, it just I just click with his personality, you know. But it could have been somebody else in, in, in the group of disciples. And so he tells them, look, the eye. You got to get that right. You got work to do for me. Right now we are all disciples of Lord Jesus Christ. We have work to do. Amen. And God right now wants to adjust these eyes. Amen. So I love it because right here in, in verse 26 he says, he says, look. Look at the birds of the air. Why in the world would Lord Jesus Christ say, look at the birds of the air? Say it with me, look up. Look up. Mm. Sometimes the biggest breakthrough that you can have at that very moment of plots from the enemy, of distractions, maybe it's depression, maybe it's anxiety, maybe the devil's trying to, to, to tempt you to do something, to smoke something or to put something in your body that you know, right, and you're starting to just have these conversations with the evil one, which you know he ain't got no right to talk to you. I love this because Lord Jesus Christ says, look. Lord Jesus Christ could have said, look at, look at the field. He actually says that. The lilies of the field, right? But at this moment, he says, look at the birds in the air. Look up. How many of you know that when, when the enemy is trying to roll out these distractions, when you're starting to feel down, when you're starting to feel defeated, when you know that, listen, what is happening to me? How many of you know to look up? I pray in Jesus' name right now that we know. Look up. He continues and says, they do not sow or reap or gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. And then he says this, are you, praise Jesus. Come on, Sister Ashley. Are you not much more valuable than they? For the past month, and I am recovered, we've been going over value. We've been going over this topic, who am I? And boy, Holy Spirit's anointing, just like right now, just, just floods us, right? And the question that I have to you is, do you know your value? You see, I love this because here Lord Jesus is saying, look at the birds. Look at how God takes care of them. Right? God knows every creature. Everything that has breath, God is the one giving him that breath. Oh, hallelujah. And then he says, are you not much more valuable than they? Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to his life? Why do you worry about clothes, about a truck, right? If it's not a truck, what else can it be, right? What else can it be, right? Isn't it some, ain't that something? Because it could just be just the little things, right? A washer, dryer, right? Computer. Computer ain't acting right, right? Maybe the coffee pot. Oh, my goodness, what? Pastor, did you go there? Oh, you ain't getting your coffee this morning, right? The sky's falling, right? What could it be? You know, last night we had a sister vehicle, wouldn't start for whatever reason. And it was an opportunity for the enemy to create havoc, drama, stress. But the glory of Holy Spirit is... We just stood around, worshiped God. It wouldn't start. Wouldn't start. Finally, I fixed the problem because it was the washer. It was the wipers, right? The wipers. No, that, no, pray for me. That's not the truth. That's not the truth. But I was telling him to check the wipers because it wasn't starting. And by the grace and mercy of God, everything was hooked up, still wasn't starting. This beloved man of God said, it will start. And guess what? Brother Matt pushed that button. It started like, and is it working right now? New battery. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. It will start in Jesus' name. Amen. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his glory was adorned like one of these. If that is how God clothed the grass of the field, which is here today and gone tomorrow, thrown into the furnace, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? I need to take this moment to, to truly bless Holy Spirit so that we not only embrace what, what's on this screen right here as far as here in, in verse 30, I'm sorry, in 29, is this. When God says, how much more 
How much more can I clothe you? We're not talking about, we're talking about the blood of Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, we are clothed for eternity in royalty. I can tell you all day long that you're royalty, that you're a beloved child of God. That because of Jesus Christ and what he has done, Brother Christian, he has taken you from the pit of hell and he placed you in the highest of high. And that's where you are for eternity. And the glory of God through your life, look at, look at your beloved sitting next to you, hallelujah, just, just glowing. Amen. I could tell you guys this all day, every day. That this is who you are in Christ. That Christ gave you what belonged to him. He gave it to you. But. If you don't believe it, right, Brother Ryan? If you don't believe it, then how far will you go in your royalty? Right? You see, the prodigal son knew that he was royalty. But the wrong choices that he made, he wound up in the pig pen. And there's some of us right now that, guess what? We're going in and out of the pig pen. Oh, it's nice and fun in here. And then you get out of the pig pen and you're like, I don't want nothing to do with that. And then guess what? Oh, I missed the pig pen. I like to get a little fun in here again, right? You know how dangerous this game is? Last time I checked, pigs eat everything. And the word of God says, don't, don't, your precious pearls, don't play around with pigs because the pigs will trample them. And then after they trample the precious gift of God that's in you, they will devour you. Are you feeling that right now? That if you continue to play this game with Holy Spirit, that God Almighty is warning you, I have mercy over you. I have grace. But if you don't want nothing to do with me, if you get to the point where Holy Spirit is screaming at you and you want nothing to do with him, God says, I'll turn you over. Say it with me, God forbid. What are you looking at? I love this right here. The blind man. Amen. You guys know the story, right? The blind man. And what did Lord Jesus Christ do? <laughs> I have God's DNA. Do you have God's DNA? I'm asking, Sister Lord, do you have God's DNA running in you? Or is your DNA just a Brady? Amen. It's God's DNA. Brother Larry? I know, brother. Praise God. That lollipop looks so good. <laughs> Isn't there a rule no lollipops in the sanctuary? <laughs> I didn't mean get crunchy. <laughs> brother got crunchy. I'm like, that looks really good. Amen. Pastor John, I'm going to ask you to pray a prayer over everyone's eyes. And before Pastor prays, I want us right now, Holy Spirit just showed this to me, praise God. If there's anything that's going on in your life right now that Holy Spirit already touched on, maybe there's unforgiveness, maybe there's judgment, maybe there's racism, bigotry, maybe you're, maybe you're just so prideful that you think you just got it together. Guess what? No, you don't. Not one of us do. Only one had it together, and he died on that cross for us. Amen. But before a pastor prays, he's going to say a prayer, and Holy Spirit showed this to me. That as he prays, and we just sit still and worship, the anointing of Holy Spirit will not only fill us and rest on us, but God will remove every scale Amen. off of our eye. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Are you ready in Jesus' name? Amen. Amen. Raise your hand if you're ready, because if not, if, if, if one hand doesn't go up, we're going to stop. Pastor, you see. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Heavenly Father, thank you. Go ahead, Pastor. Heavenly Father, we just come right now. We come, Lord, with our eyes wide open. And God, we just pray right now for every eye, every person that is even thinking in their mind of anything that's not right, any person here to, tonight is is dealing with something 
in their life that they know they should be doing it. God, any person here tonight is, is have unforgiveness on them. I pray right now that all these scales fall off of Hallelujah. them. Hallelujah. I pray right now in the name of Jesus, Lord. If they need to go to the altar right now and, and not be ashamed to go down there and just get on their knees and say, my scales has just fell off. I give it all to you, Jesus. So, Lord, I pray right now that every eye is going to be clear. They're going to, all they're going to see when they open them is Lord Jesus Christ. And I thank you for that, Lord. Bless them. Touch them. Help them. God, we just give it all to you tonight because, God, it, it is all about you. It's not about us, Lord. But you give us free will. And sometimes, even as Christians, we give, get our eyes on the wrong things. So tonight, Lord, I pray right now that everybody gets free, gets set free tonight from any kind of scale that's on their eyes, anything that's stopping them from doing what you want them to do, Lord. Because, God, you will allow them to do what they want to do. You give us free will, like I said, Lord, but I'm praying right now for deliverance. I'm praying right now for anyone that's maybe lost and don't really know for sure if they know you. I pray right now, Lord, that they ask you in their heart and those scales fall off and they truly see who you really are. God, sometimes we say we know who you are, but, God, we don't live a life like that. So I'm praying right now everybody in this church right now will live a life that, they, that people sees them that they truly, truly, are following you. They truly have that relationship with you, Lord. Bless them tonight. Thank you for Pastor for bringing the message that he brought, Lord. And God, thank you for him being obedient to listen to you no matter whatever he, you've asked him to do. He just proved to us tonight, Lord, that you're more important than anything else in this world. And God, I thank you for a pastor like that. We love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I believe and declare after that anointed prayer that your, your eyes are no longer going to be the same in Jesus' name. That your very heartbeat is a reminder of who our Lord is. That every breath you take is the presence of Holy Spirit. That you don't take each breath for granted. You know, it's one of these things right now, Brother Ryan, that I can tell you right now. People are so quick to get upset at the smallest things. It's real sad. Because did he not do enough on that cross where somebody can't just be the bigger person and say, it's forgotten, it's, it's forgiven, let's move forward, amen? And I believe that right now in Jesus' name that we're going to be doing that. Therefore, do not worry by saying what you shall eat or drink, what you shall wear. For the Gentiles strived after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. What are you looking at? But seek first. Are you ready? Seek first. What does Lord Jesus Christ mean? He's saying, look. Look first. You play hide and seek? Huh? How many of you play hide and seek? Then why are you looking at me like I got three eyeballs? You play hide and seek? Huh? So how many of you? Say it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. In order to seek, you have to, and God is saying, look. Look at him first, amen? So whatever you're going through, maybe it's a crunchy coworker. Stop looking at that crunchy coworker. Look at God and say, God, I know you purchased this child. And Father, I thank you that I'm, I'm here right now in their life. And I'm going to be a bright shining light for you to love on them. Father, I'm not going to be used for darkness to judge them. To, to hurt them, to, I'm going to be the light. Mm. How many of you want to be the light? You are the light, amen. The light lives in you, praise God. But it's time to make change, amen. It's time to make change, hallelujah. Listen, I ministered, I ministered to evil and darkness for so long in my life. That it was just a part of everyday life. Everything good that happened in my life back then, guess what? Oh, I got lucky. That's a lie from the pit of hell. It's God's mercy and grace trying to bless me and wake me up. Can I get an amen? amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. And glory to God, we know better now. We know gooder now. Amen. But here in my heart, family, we can have this relationship with God, and I'm reminding you. Because it is the written word, I'm reminding you. 
that if you decide to honor your pride, if you try to be a master, if you try to serve yourself and God, God ain't going to have anything to do with it. And how many of you agree? There's many of you that are related to some. I'm not judging them, but I'm saying their fruits are just pure hatred and evil. But yet they call themselves children of light. Right? But that light is such darkness that you don't even want to be around them. And you pray for them, you don't judge them, right? And when you are with them, maybe it's that we just had Thanksgiving, maybe Christmas. You're going to be around them again. You all had that conversation with the Lord. I know I'm not the only one, oh, Lord, I'm going to go see this person. Help me, Lord Jesus. Oh, my goodness, they're just in the other room and I could feel it. Right? But guess what? The glory is God in you saying, my child, you just love on them. You just laugh. Guess what, family? It's okay not to be right. Some of y'all need to hear this. It's okay not to be right. Amen? Guess what? It, it, it's, it's okay to be, to, to be the dumb one in the room. Isn't it beautiful? Examine Lord Jesus Christ. When religious people would try to trap him, he could, he could recite the whole Bible. It's his word. But Doug, what does he do? He talks about the Father. He tells stories. Right? Did you know in the law that this takes place? What thou dost say it. I can't even believe I said that right there. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Spirit. Right? And Lord Jesus just draws cartoons on the sand. Whoever did not sin, go ahead and throw the stone. See, we're so spoiled because that is part of the Bible now. But what I need to remind you is, when he spoke this, that wasn't written. He spoke God's glory. The living word is inside of you. You could either be locked up in religion, or you can be freed by the spirit of God, and you can continue speaking light. However you want to say it, you just keep speaking light and give all the glory to the main light, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? What are you looking at? Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. Therefore, do not worry. Do not worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will worry about itself. Today has enough worries. Amen. If you all would stand up with me, praise God. We got a couple songs. I pray. In the name above every name, the only name to pray, Lord Jesus Christ, that tonight in this worship, the Holy Spirit has got such a hold on our eyes that right now he's still just scraping scales off of it. To some of us right now, this message hurts because you know, you know you're wrong. I know I'm wrong. But the question is, what are you going to do in being wrong? Are you going to repent and give it all to God, set it and forget it? Or are you going to continue tonight when you leave here to struggle with that very thing? I pray in Jesus' name that we leave everything at his holy altar. Lord Jesus Christ is waiting for you. Will you come to the altar? Will you, beloved child of God? Amen.